now convening the meeting of the Town of Manlius Planning Board. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. for corrections or modifications. There being none, we have a motion pending to approve the minutes and it's second by Ann. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved as is. The next item, item on the agenda is uh, commercial zoning code revisions. And uh, on behalf of this, we have Town Councilor Sarah uh, Bollinger here, and she's going to talk to us and explain to us what this is all about. They've been working on this project diligently for probably a good year. Yeah. And, uh, and I want to report that your chairperson is a member of this committee and has been working diligently with us. So. Um, and I'd also like to thank Attorney Sutphin, who has worked very hard, and the Tresetti, who was on the committee for the first year. Um, so the, the point of the, this effort is, was to streamline and make more consistent the different codes. Each code was written at a different year by a different attorney, and they were not all consistent. So the first step of this was that each code now has the same three elements, purpose and intent, design principles, and permitted uses. So with that... If a person is interested in, like, why does this zone even exist, they can go right to that first paragraph and understand the, the legislative intent of why that code was made. Uh, and then the design principles is to provide just generic assistance to someone with what kind of physical site thing do we believe belongs there. And in the lower zones, we want it to look a little bit more residentially or more consistent with the neighborhood around there. And then in the more industrial and commercial zones, it can look more industrial and commercial. So that was sort of the, the idea of what we wanted to do. And then the permitted uses, we changed to be a table. And um, I, the table you have is not that easy to read. So I've been working on improving the, the font of it to make it easier to read. But it's all the same information. And this would be something whereby if you had owned property or you were thinking about acquiring a property for a business, that you could look through it. The business I want to develop is a restaurant. Where can I do that? And it, you can follow your finger along and find out exactly where you're allowed to do what type of restaurant. So our thought was that this was simpler for a person planning a business project to find which zone is appropriate for what they want to do with their business. Similarly, if somebody owns a big empty lot and is trying to market it, they can market to people who want to build this type of thing. So they could say, I'm looking for, bit for chain stores that sell this type of thing because my property is allowed to do that. Whereas I'm not going to go market to a chain store that does something that I'm not permitted to do on my property. That wouldn't make any sense. So I think it's going to make it easier for everybody. So that was our, that was our philosophy. Um, and the only other thing that is of significance is that we did add another zone at the very beginning called transitional business. And the purpose of transitional business is to create an opportunity for smaller, less invasive types of businesses to exist in proximity to residential property uh, without, without, having to, without zoning them as residential. And what, my, what I anticipate would happen out of this is that there would be fewer parcels zoned RM and more parcels zoned uh, TB. Residential mixed use versus um, transitional business district. Currently, I want to make it clear: no parcel is changed by this proposed law. Uh, we made an effort to go through every sort of weird corner lot and make sure that what we said would would cover whatever was already there. This is only a forward-looking document, and um, th those are my prepared remarks. Can I just? Say something because you know I, I apologize if I'm getting out of where I'm supposed to get to. But one of the things that the committee and Joe you were you were on it too. One of the things that they noticed is that, that there was a long distance between RT and neighborhood shopping, mm -hmm. and so 
when this started, and I apologize, I wasn't involved in the whole, mm -hmm. the whole thing, but we were looking at trying to kind of bridge that gap mm -hmm. and, and come up with a commercial zone that would be closer to commercial and, and in between RT and Ridley Chapel. So that, that was the original thought process. Yes, I think that's, that's accurate. And I think, um, Mr. Polkinson, to answer your question earlier about the commercial zones, I think there's, sort of, there's a philosophy issue of having fewer zones that are broad and more zones that are narrower. And we are leaning in the direction of more zones that are narrower as opposed to fewer zones that are broad. And I, I think that there's no right or wrong of that. I, I think that's just the direction that we are moving. Any questions? And we know that there, the, the version that you have has some typos in it and some other things. Feel free to point out any sort of changes that you find that need to be corrected. Um, we are planning to hear from the public as well. Um, and so there may be other things that come up at the public hearing. Uh, but, but I wanted you guys to know first because you will be the ones dealing with it. I'm strongly in favor of this. It, it helps not only the, uh, the residents who are trying to determine what they can do with the property, but I think it's going to help our codes department as well because it, it better defines what is capable of being in the different zones. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think this is a great idea. And, and what you've done here, uh, Makes makes life a lot easier for everybody to understand. In black and white, they can understand it so much better. Thank you. Well, I agree. You guys did a good job with this. Sarah, I'd also like your philosophy of tighter definitions, more zones. That way, there's less slop in the process and people trying to wiggle their way through it. Mm -hmm. um, one thing from a layout perspective, if you could uh, get a few horizontal lines in there. Mm -hmm. that the uh, town board is, wants to get some type of a response from the planning board as to whether the planning board is generally uh, in favor of this proposition, uh, the definitions being done here, or whether they're thinking it's in the negative. Uh, so if, if we could get a rough show of hands of those who uh, are in favor of what we're trying to do, uh, that would be great. Okay. That's, that's everybody. <laughs> so uh, if you'd be kind enough to report back to the town board mm -hmm. that the uh, planning board is uh, unanimously thinking it's a good, the general idea of what you're doing here. And I understand there may be some slight modifications when people get done talking to you and the uh, public gets done talking to you. But uh, the general idea, it's, it's great. Thank you, thank you for all of your work on this. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. So good. And she's coming. presentation today for an accessory use permit and site plan relative to a massage therapy uh, business 
Uh, at that location on Kirkville Road, tax map number 055-01-7, and the second tax map number 055-1-8. Can I ask who is going to speak on behalf of the applicant? I don't know. I guess. I can. I guess. Okay. If you, you can either stay in your chair if you prefer, or if you don't mind coming to the podium. That's fine. And if you think you can hear you better with the mask down, do what you feel comfortable with. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> can you just tell us a little bit about what it is you're doing and why? Uh, let me see, I got notes. <laughs> uh, I'm a licensed massage, we're both licensed massage therapists, and we're both semi-retired. <clears throat> we had offices in uh, Shopping Town, but as you know, it's no Shopping Town anymore. And we moved out March 17th when they closed because of the COVID. Otherwise, we probably would still be there. Um, so we have uh, used, what we did is we took a room that we had in our home. It's like in the back. You can just open the door and then walk straight in. And we turned it into a massage room. So, but we're, we're semi-retired. You know, I'm 75 and almost, and he's 80, so we're doing, you know, if I'm seeing five people a week, it's a lot, so it's not going to encroach on anyone's privacy at all, I feel. So. Okay, we're going we're gonna to ask you a few questions sure. so that we get a better understanding of what is going on. Sure. Uh, how long have you been doing this at that location? We just moved out in March, and we couldn't start working, because as massage therapists, we couldn't start, I think, until... Like July, the end of June. Middle of June. So you've been doing it since the middle of yeah. the middle of June. Yeah. Okay. How many hours a day are you open? It's all by appointment. I looked at my appointment book this week. I have five people for the whole week. What type of hours are you giving for appointments? So that we have a general idea. It's probably anywhere from nine o'clock in the morning till five, but uh, it has to be all by appointment. We don't have any set hours, we don't advertise, so there won't be any sign on the property. No advertisement at all? No, absolutely not. Okay, and you said you were currently doing approximately five of these a week? Yeah. I looked at my appointment book, that's what it was. That's what it was. How long is the appointments? How long on average? One hour. One hour. So we can, in case I do have like two people in the same day, I can schedule them way apart. And there's plenty of parking. We have a long driveway and parking behind you know, the, the house. And the park, so. I'm not going to put you off with other members if you have yeah, questions. I got a question. Did, when you were in Shopping Town and before, uh, did you have people that wanted to come in the evening because they worked and, and uh, they had a problem? No. With their, no. I, no. And what's happened because of the COVID, we're not seeing anybody in the evening at all. <clears throat> but because I didn't want to drive at night, even though it wasn't that far from the house and stuff, but I very rarely, rarely took anybody to do that. So. Uh, I Based think. upon your, your, your history, though, uh, do you anticipate, we, we all hope we're going to be over this COVID thing pretty soon, uh, more, more clients that no, I don't foresee that. In um, 1985, we opened up an office on Genesee Street, <coughs> and it was on the corner of Genesee and Westcott. I had 12 therapists working, and there was no way you know, I'm going to do that again. So. <coughs> that was you can the imagine place. the battle that we fought. James Street. We were there for 15 years. 
Well, we left the building uh, when Mr. Sheldon called. I don't know if you know he's a lawyer. I know. And our office was very prominent. If you want a reference, call Sheldon. <laughs> a very prominent lawyer who sold the building. <clears throat> if you need a reference, you can contact his office. Our office was directly across the hall from him. We operate a very quiet business. We did not feel we would disturb anyone's privacy. Uh, I would say lawnmowers make more noise in our community than we do. <clears throat> so um, we have been very respected in our community. We opened the first massage center in central New York. I taught at the Onondaga School of Therapeutic Massage when it first opened. Um, I've often taught and lectured at Syracuse University, the medical school as well, uh, Cicero and Syracuse Adult Education. So <clears throat> what we're, what I'm trying to say here is we're, we're, you know, we're really small right now. <laughs> I mean, it's just, the only reason I'm still staying open is that a few people really still want to come to me. We have had a crisis in college. We have had a crisis for several years. We just come in on local people. When we were in the mall, we did get some walk, walk ins to business with us. And several, a few of them have continued to come from the mall. But as she said, she has got five people this week. I have no one that right now. Doesn't mean I won't get them. I have this about, I have this about three a week now. And it's not like it's going to be major traffic coming and going. We have plenty of places to park in the building, places we can turn around and pull back out. So they're not backing into the critical road. If nothing, increase the traffic. Okay, I've got a couple of questions. You said you, you're doing three a week, you're doing five a week. So it's a total of eight a week that we're coming into the facility. Right. Okay. The door, the entrance that these people come into, is it a private entrance that just goes to that one massage Yes, room? it's into, uh, well, there's like a, an entrance way and then it goes straight, straight into the massage room. Okay. Do you ever have the opportunity or does it ever occur that both of you have a patient at the same time? We try not. So one car, basically, okay. at any given time might be Now, driver. what happened while we were reported in is when we moved out of shopping town, and we did have a lot of cars there because I had the electrician coming in, I had the painters coming in, I had somebody that was remodeling, you know, putting the floor out. And so yeah, there was, it did look like the drove by and said, wow, look at all those cars, but they were the workmen. And they haven't been there since last month. For okay. massage, is it just hands-on? Or do you do water therapy, or what do you? No, I'm just hands-on. Hands-on. Accessory use permits, somebody refresh my memory. Are those given for a number of years, a set period of time? I can't, is it seven years? We, we, have special been, use? we have been doing it for seven, as a general rule. Mm -hmm. uh, but we could limit that too. Because I think in this, I'm not sure how many more years do you guys anticipate doing this? So we can't do it anymore, probably. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Okay, I just, we got time to talk about that. I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. Arnie, any questions? Easy to understand. Have a waiting room, or you, you don't need one? You don't need one because it's direct in. So. Okay. I guess this is the question I have next is really for the board. We got an updated survey that was dated, I think it was 88 or 80. 86 was it? Or something? Uh, let's see if that's 87. 87. Was it 87? 87. I, I'm just throwing it out. Is this. Does this satisfy the board? I mean, are we I saw the certifications, but I didn't see any drawing on the copy that was sent to me. Can you? Yeah. We, I have a copy of the one. We're not providing a vision on it. It's just the inside one. So it's uh, this is This is good. Yeah, what, what is your last time? Thank you. What's the last time? Thank you. My answer is I'm at what, what are your, your hours of operation? What are your hours of operation? There hours is of operation is by appointment. It's only by appointment. It's, oh. it's not like we're, you know, we're, no. we're there at our home hours of operation by appointment. And when I was at Shopping Town, it was the same way. I didn't. You know, she was by appointment in Shopping Town. I had, a, I had a retail section that I kept open. I don't have, I'm not doing that now. A retail section? A retail section of products, but I'm not doing that now. All right, if there's, if there's any other questions, uh, raise them now. Otherwise, I'm going to move on. OK. 
Okay, folks, what we have to do now is we have to schedule a public hearing. The public has a right to respond and let us know whether they are inclined towards it or against it, or sometimes no one shows up at all. Uh, and uh, the next available date, unfortunately, is... October 26th. October 26th. Uh, normally it would be uh, Columbus Day, but we uh, are closed on Columbus Day. So okay. October 26th, is that day okay with you folks? Yeah. The public hearing is, would be for uh, the public to come and ask questions if they wanted to ask questions or for them to come and make statements sure. if they felt one way or the other. And we would listen to them and we would then use our judgment to determine what we felt is the most appropriate. Okay? okay? So if you folks don't mind coming back, back on October 26th. Okay. I make a motion. Oh. I make a motion to have a public hearing. Motion for public hearing by Rich. Second, Second by Fred. All in favor? Public hearing. All yes. in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Unanimous. Public hearing. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Okay. We'll see you on the 26th. Very much so. It's my much younger brother.
who want to build a house on it? Okay. <laughs> so uh, they've been there for 40 years. Um, it's a quasi-commercial use uh, currently. Um, the property, the structure that's there now will probably have to be demolished. There's all sorts of issues with slab on grade and mold and all sorts of other things. So there's very little chance of salvaging that. Um, but really what we, what we did, we created a conforming plan so that we can get some determination made. We, we didn't do a sub, we didn't show you a plan of what we're going to build because there's too many open issues right now. Number one is, what is our maximum density? Can we, can, will this board refer this for 278 consideration? Uh, because it really does need 278 in order to make a good quality project uh, to allow us to cluster, keep these open areas forever wide so they're not disturbed and they're not developed, just stay out of the steep grade areas or what have you. So what we want to do is show you what a conforming plan would permit for density. And for the whole thing. For the that's, whole thing. That's, that's your that's all we're conforming. This is, all we're showing, this is all what you see is what you get. This do, is all do. we're doing for the whole thing. Okay. Um, so basically what we would like this board to do is, is come to a, den a maximum density determination. Um, based on this plan, that would allow for a maximum of 16 duplexes or eight detached single family homes. I guess that's question number one. If you did not create an HOA and made this road pro uh, private, or make it public instead of private, how would it change the subdivision? Well, if we were to make that a private a public road, we would have to um, meet town specs, town standards if we want out of that. I think it's under cul-de-sac length, so it may be permissible in that regard. Um, we really wanted to do it as a private road. We really wanted a private gated community. It's really what we're leaning towards. And if you did the cluster, would, would there be an HOA? Is that your There intent? would be an HOA, yes, and it would still be a private gated community. And everything else would be common area that is common area, lot. correct. If we, if we do, if we go to the, the, the patio homes, we'll probably deal with zero lot line footprints like we did Erie Village and, and many other projects we did. Everything outside the footprint is HOA common area features. But I think we can agree to a lot of things that will make this board comfortable. You faked me out. I, I thought you submitted to us a conventional plan and you're doing conventional. Well, no, I'm giving you a conventional plan. I don't know what we're building yet because I don't know where you guys are at. I think we got to determine one density. What's our maximum density? And number two, whether or not we're going to get 278 consideration. We need 278. Without it, we really are forced to a conventional plan. And I think it's, it's ugly. I don't think that it's necessarily the best use of the site. Well, I've got a lot of questions about this as a, a conventional plan and going forward with this. But, uh, so, okay, all right, so the bottom line is uh, you're looking to do cluster. I, we would prefer to do a cluster. Yeah. And, and again, it may, may still be single families. Uh, it may not be all attached patio homes. We would like a determination to a maximum density. We would like some, uh, we'd like to set a precedent as a, a stipulation as to separation between structures or buildings. Um, so that we can basically design a plan that works for everybody. Doug, this is a question for you, and I, I don't know it off the top of my head, but I think this zone calls for 100 feet minimum of frontage. 100 foot of frontage, correct. And how do you measure that on a cul-de-sac? I don't have the answer, I don't know. I, don't I think we love to make the building line, but mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, these, I think traditionally we measured along the arc. So, the worst case is they might have to, if we are to accept the concurrent conventional, they may have to push the cul de sac back a little bit to get the 100 feet of frontage. Worst case. I don't know. I don't have an answer. But the, is this road, is it the width and or cul de sac proportions that would work for a, a, a road the way it looks right now? for? I believe the radius is, is acceptable, and I believe the width of the, the uh, black top is. The, but again, our intention, I don't think. Well, I mean, because the first thing we're going to do is figure out what a con, you know, what the conventional count is. So that's what I'm trying to get at. Also, Tom, the detention, retention. I'm assuming, because you got this click back here, it's going to be somewhere 
on the common area behind it. Yes, we, we, that was the only thing that would ever go in that in that lower area would be stormwater management. I put that on the list uh, of, of the things that, that I was looking for, which would be, uh, that, you know, that we would stipulate, we would covenant that that's that lower area uh, remains forever undeveloped green space uh, by the HOA will never be developed for anything other than minimal stormwater management area, uh, which would be pretty much close to the foot of the embankment. Um, so again, that's 17 acres for the for the area which remains in perpetuity. Okay, and you would grant the town an easement in case the HOA doesn't maintain. The we would, um, basins I, that we could get back there to do it for drainage. For yes, in fact, we always usually give you guys cross easements um, for, for, for your um, drainage district and anything you have in that regard. Um, no, that's not a problem. Um, but it would primarily be for the benefit of the homeowners as far as recreational or walking trails or whatever. Um, anything we do in that respect, we can't really open it to the public. Um, but our goal is, is to do a private roadway. We didn't think that this was a roadway that the town necessarily wanted to put on their liability sheet or to be responsible for. Um, and we think that with that, with that maximum of 16 residents, and again, that's our maximum. I'm not saying we're going to build 16, uh, but if we could get a determination as to our maximum, it will help us go back and design this properly. Uh, but it does need what, to Excuse me, but so Tom, when you um, end up building a cluster, is that all going to be down there too? Or is it going to be N nothing anywhere would be down there? Uh, nothing, no, everything would be, everything, any development would right. be above the two red lines. Even in the cluster? Even in the cluster, correct. Tom, the, the town policy is that uh, even if this were to be a private road, it has to be designed. Yes, yeah, so it down back. I understand that. Yes. So they have to be same sub base, same under drains. Yeah. And right now it shows as a road by use, so it have to have some type of right away. No, I understand that, and uh, we would build it as on specs. Um, again, it, it may not look like that, though. In fact, uh, I suspect that if we if we get clustering and we can get 278 on this, that this would be somewhat smaller. Uh, that we would. Um, bring our density in, the road wouldn't be so lengthy. That's the reason the length is, is to get 100 foot of frontage on the lots. Uh, it's not required, it's not needed if we do some clustering. What we were talking about earlier is possibly a mix of some clustering and some single family, uh, but again, in order to do that, we need to know what our density is and we need to know the separation between building. We can stipulate that the bottom half, the, the, the lowlands will, will be forever protected. We can also stipulate that, that we will uh, stay at, we will maintain that 25 foot buffer from the steep gray area. Um, and if we can if we can agree on a, uh, a separation between structures, I think those are, your, are part of the, the main issue for us. It seems to me that uh, we need engineering to uh, put their heads together and come up with some formulas as to what the final numbers should be. Well, in, in order to do that, and remember, because in a recent uh, cluster that we had, we did make them do enough engineering that we knew it would work. Now, this doesn't seem to have the same issues that that other um, site had, but, you know, you need to show not just, you know, that they lay out okay, but that it, they're, they're buildable and that you can do the detention and everything. I mean, I think you probably can, but you need to give some um, engineering to it. Right? You can't just say, oh, this is how it shows up on paper. Right. No, I, I have no problem doing that, Jamie. I think, again, I just wanted to nail down some of these prior yep. issues first so that yep. when we put our engineering to work, we know what our maximum density is and we know what, what you guys want to see on that plan. Well, I, I'm talking about even for the maximum density determination that we need to see some kind of engineering that shows that this is buildable. Okay, and I guess other than stormwater, what would I mean? We're not Probably stormwater. There's really stormwater. very little cuts and fills. We're basically using the grade that are there. We're avoiding the steep areas. And it's eight lots, 16 units. That's your plan. Maximum 16 units. And again, it may not be that. It may. Maybe considerably less. 
you know, we've been trying to guess what, what size people are going to want to build. We know that it's probably an upscale site, but it's funny, um, you know, uh, people spend all kinds of money on different size homes. It seems like we need uh, more details. We need elevations uh, to determine the slopes and uh, where the buffers are going to be. Uh, this, this is only... Well, your elevations are all on the plan. I mean, there's one for contrary. Um, and, uh, can, you, can you point out approximately where the present Freeman home and business is? Uh, yeah, the present Freeman, probably right about in the middle of the call to say. Okay. Approximately. Okay. And the entryway, you'll see there's two light posts up here, and they're shown on the plan, the two lamp posts. That's where the existing roadway driveway is. And we would like to use that. In fact, um, based on what we're seeing, that, um, that would be the most appropriate place for it. Tom, the building in bowl for a, a duplex, I assume, is broader than a single family home. We've been working with different floor plans, and um, we can we have a lot of footprints that are three feet wide. Uh, with, 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 um, um, and, and, um, Mr. Fowler's up here, I think, are 40 feet wide. So if you put two of them together, you're at 80 or whatever. Um, so no, they tend to be narrower and longer, uh, typically. But again, at what size? And again, we don't know that yet. We don't know what our density is, and we, we're trying to make sure pick it all. It's like a chicken and the egg. I think it would be good though if the building envelopes were shown on this plan. The, the, the footprints for the units? Not, well, that, that would be good too, but I'm saying the building envelope. Because you've got to be inside that 25 foot buffer, you've got side yard setbacks, you've got front yard setbacks. Just, you know, how well, big true, is that building? But under 278, all that goes away. I understand. But we're looking at a conventional plan. I'm just curious. How big of a building envelope is on lot eight or maybe one? Yeah, I think that's a critical component to see what the build out is. Because you know, when I look at this, it looks like you got eight lots, right? And, and I think what Rich is saying, if you show the building envelopes, maybe you do have eight lots, maybe you don't. And one looks like it's probably tight for a duplex. I would say number one might be tight, tight unless you put it one and three, I think. Yeah, possibly three too, right? Yeah, I mean the topo. It looks pretty good on the inside of that red line. It's pretty flat. I, I, I mean, I can show footprints for it. I mean, we actually, we build them as narrow, but we have them 20 feet wide, so it's, that's not an issue. I mean, um, we go anywhere from 20 to 40 feet in width on, on, on a duplex. How many? I didn't hear that time. 20 to 40 feet on an individual duplex. So technically, a two unit can fit on a 40 foot wide envelope. Again, is that the best? Design of that the best. That's what 278 provides. Though. It allows that flexibility in preserving this green space and, and preserving a unique site, uh, so that we get to you know create a plan that's not cookie cutter, you know conventional lots, because uh, that doesn't work. It doesn't work with this plan configuration. It doesn't work with all the parameters that we have to, to uh, put around. So I think at some point, you know, for this to work, we need 278 consideration. Under conventional zoning, it's, it's just too, too confined. But I guess what we're, at least what I'm hearing, is that we still would need, I'd like to see the building envelope and maybe even the building footprints of what it is that you're proposing on these lots to make sure this would work. Just that you put 16 for, units on this. Again, this is just going through the motion, but it's not, if, if what you guys want, I'll give it to you. I, from a number standpoint. You need a conventional plan first. Right, right, right. That's what I tried to give you here today. You know, which with a conventional plan, we normally don't show buildings. Kind of like that last phase of how well, I think, I think we, we need to. We had the envelopes that we showed. Yeah, well, we, need, we need to have the envelopes to see what the setbacks are to see if we can get in there, right? Yeah, I can, I can show you building envelopes and conform. I can make that happen. I mean, I, I like eight lots, 16 homes better than 26. Yeah, or whatever it started. And, well, you know, I'm not with Doug. We've been trying to put our heads together and come up with something that works for everybody. And again, there's dollars and cents involved or whatever. But, uh, you know, again, I, I think the lots meet the requirements. And uh, I didn't show the, the footprints or houses on there because we normally don't do that in our conventional plans. But we'll do, it. we'll do whatever you want. I mean, I'm just I one vote. But that would be 
leaving any footprints. I, I think the end, building envelopes is what's most important right now. Building envelopes of the area that we have. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. And the engineering, Doug, you know, just making sure that, that we, I just want to make sure that we're consistent about what we're asking for and we need to make sure that. Yeah, because the building has what's time, right? I mean, it's going it's to show us. Right, we have 15 foot sidelines under the R. That's going to show us where. Uh, we're 30, foot, 30 foot setback from the right, I'm assuming, right, I'm assuming that you're going to push retention on the back. So then we're going to need storm piping mm -hmm. easements, and that's going to play into building envelopes. Right. But I it looks like it looks like you've probably got enough for the eight lots. But I think that would pull it. I think that would square things up. And you know, like, like we've done so far, I'd be happy to meet with you and see what you're thinking. You know, over the next couple of weeks. It seems like it would be productive. It, it looks like he's probably going to be able to do what we're asking him to do so. on this conventional. And I, I think we should see the, the proposed cluster sooner rather than later as kind of part of it. Like next time, bring that I don't in too. Well, you to put on there. That's more of a Well, well, you, I mean, you. Go ahead. We, we don't have another meeting here until October 26th. So you've got, you got four weeks. I'm, I'm hoping that within two weeks, the engineering can work back and forth and come up with a figure that they believe is appropriate. Uh, and then, then we can move on. On the 26th, we can move on. And hopefully, you will have, uh, once, once you guys come to an agreement, we can have some costs or information on what the cost of development is going to look like more precisely to move forward. But we, what we need, obviously, we need to have that cluster beforehand to uh, size it up. But I mean, I know you're like you're trying to you're trying to get a commitment on the, on that number of lots. Of course. Um, the thing of what you're what you're saying here, and we were confused when we were looking at it at our, our meeting the other day. We really weren't quite sure what we were doing. But now that we understand what this is, like if you came in here with a, a conventional plan and your stormwater worked and your building envelopes worked and your road works, then then you're then this board is without a, and you're like and we're doing the R three boom. There's very little that this board can do about that, right? So that's what we're that's what we're looking at. So if you're telling us it can all be done, then at this moment, you know you know prove it and then you'll you get your lots. It's not that well again, but I still want the two seventy eight. No 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 I understand. But but you're saying you wanted to want to know how much so that but that first part and then that's why I'm saying simultaneously with that bring in what the cluster's gonna look like because you're you're telling us you think you can do this and we're saying and Doug is saying probably probably on a conventional so let's keep it moving. Okay, right? We're not at all opposed to 278 consideration. But that's it comes out better yeah. for the no, community. I, I understand. Yeah, 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 it does. So that way, if it, it works. All right, I think I can, and I'll get together with Doug, and I'll, we'll, we'll get this knocked out. So you'll have both a uh, conventional conforming plan and a cluster plan. Thanks. So, right. so just so I understand, we've got one more question for you. The lots actually go to the road, so that the road is actually owned by the lot owners, the way this is laid out. That's true. And, it, and typically, it would be owned by the HOA, and the lot would be, there'd be a certain setback or whatever, but the right way for the roadway might be a little bit wider than the, the asphalt. So I'm just pointing this out because if this is the way you're laying it out, it's going to have an impact on the front yard setback, I would think. I got Because you. you can't build a house in the roadway, even though it might be 25 feet. Of, I throw that out there just as we go forward with trying to figure out a conventional. Well, if I have to show a conventional road on there, it's going to be wrong. Is that why you wanted a private road? No, I want a private road only because we want an integrated community. We want to keep it tight. You know, it's a small community as it is. So you have a you know, magnetic card or whatever to get in. We just thought it would be uh, appropriate for, you know, if it's going to be a senior facility for the most part, you know, it's a, uh, it's a retirement community, I, that's what I think, um, you know, maintenance free type stuff. I guess that was my first question, Doug, I thought the answer was, this looks like it would be a conventional road, is that not true? Like, this, is it of the width and the dimensions that would be appropriate for a conventional road? I didn't go through it. I didn't okay. say, no, it's that, that, is, that, that could be a but, but the issue is 
you is, Jamie, and everywhere in the town where we've had a private road, um, you know, within a period of five to seven years, people come in and say, hey, town take over. Town taking over, right? So the policy with the town is that you know, everything has to be designed to, to town specs town with a with right away to it. You guys should say no. Uh, I mean, <laughs> So, so is it? So is it? I still don't have my question answered. Is what's on there? I can't. I can't tell. Right? Okay. It I looks like my black top is, but I got to create a The width and the yeah. The width and the. But it should yeah. be. It should be fully dimensioned for us, right? Mm -hmm. To see that. So we're actually going to. So, so did you get from us what you were looking for? No. No. <laughs> Aqua 
we can't serve the pressure. So these homes will be on uh, public sewer, but private water well systems. And more than happy to answer any questions. We did provide the town with a full set of drawings. There's grading plan. I think, Doug, you got the SWIFT, maybe? We provided the SWIFT and the stormwater documents. So the town has a full set of documents for review and consideration as we move forward. We'd be more than happy to, <coughs> excuse me, answer any questions you folks may have. I've got one, yeah, I've got one question about the well. Is it going to be one well with a power with more uh, No, nope, uh, it'll be individual wells for each each, uh, each well. I each lot will have one well to serve uh, the home. Have you ever done developments like this with this size lots on individual wells? We've been involved in ones that uh, had individual lots and individual wells, as uh, opposed to trying to do a, uh, a community well. Like some of them are, there's, I saw one, it was less than an acre. And yeah, well, they're, they're right about an acre. And, and I know the town has uh, guidelines if for, for lot size if it's on well and septic, I believe. Yes. Um, but because we don't have septic, there is no lot restriction for just a well, if I understand right. I think it's the lot sizes it's are just, different. It's just a total flow of, of water up there for uh, to serve that many wells. You know. We'll certainly get into well testing. I mean, absolutely. I mean, we don't want to build a house that we can't serve water to. Uh, but we want to design for you know, the, you know, maximum use uh, and realistic use to get for I got like an observation, and this, this concerns me. And Ann and Fred, we've been on the board for quite a while. I don't ever remember approving a subdivision that had detention basins spread out over four or five lots. In other words, there's no common area. There's one, two, three that I can count the basins that what the, this basin's on two lots. This one over here is on three, three lots. This one's on possibly four. This one's on five or six. I don't ever remember approving that. It's always been in the common area. It, there's been an HOA, and they have taken care of it. So I guess that's my comment. And my question is, what's the plan for maintaining these basins? Where are the easements to get to them? The town needs to have an easement to get to them if they're not maintained properly, and the ability to build back the homeowners if, if we have to do work in there. Yeah, we'll see. And as we move through the subdivision process, we'll certainly provide the town with the maintenance agreements and the outlines and the description of those. Uh, being in the preliminary phase, you know, that's, what, that's what we're looking for, okay, those sorts of inputs. Uh, it, it is a challenge, and, and it, will, it was harder than expected because, because the slope of the grade out there uh, kind it's of steep. forced us yeah. into this situation. Uh, looking back, when they stopped phase one, this, this guy's house here actually has a drainage easement, if, if I may, here, I'll approach. Uh, there's actually a drainage easement right here, you can see, okay. left over from phase one. Okay. But, I mean, is that can, on the lot? That's on this, this guy's lot. He's built out, he's got a house here. Okay. So he probably thinks this is his side yard. <laughs> but if you, if you can compare what they left us 20 years ago, compared to what we need to meet today's standards, it's it's night and day difference. Yeah, so. I, I guess I'm just I'm giving you a, a heads up that Absolutely. it's going to be very difficult. I don't I don't know what other people are thinking, but I know in my mind there's a lot of drainage easements all over these lots, mm -hmm. including those basins, and so I don't know I don't know how you get five lot owners to agree on whether it needs maintenance or not, and who's going to pay for it. And if one guy doesn't pay for it, you get an argument, well, it's only 10% of my property. I'm only going to pay 10%. Well, it's 50% of yours. I just, I don't see that as working. I'm not sure what the plan was for that, but I personally don't see that work. Understood. We'll certainly revisit some of the issues uh, if we can minimize. Uh, but the challenge is because of the steep slopes, we, we couldn't do it all in one spot, and we were left with that little piece. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I agree with that. I don't, I don't disagree with that observation. The other thing that we typically like to have, and I didn't see it in here, are building envelopes for each lot. Uh, we did not provide a standard, I know what you mean, just the standard lot size and Yeah, but you said that if you've got a drainage basement, or a drain basin, I mean, in the middle of the lot, 
you obviously can't build there, so there's got to be some form of a setback from that, sure. which would narrow the, the envelope. So I'm just curious. We typically ask for that, and I'd like to see that if we move forward with this. But the first thing that's got to be accomplished, I think, is figuring out where we are with the basins. Sure. We, can, we can do it uh, envelope. And my, my concern was you've got these standard 3,000 3, square foot uh, uh, footprints throughout, and, and we know that that's not going to be the case. Right. So, right. so it would help us so much more to have uh, the building envelopes than, sure. than uh, the footprints. Yeah, we just use the 3,000 just as a maximum, just to get an idea. We know they're all going to be shaped differently, but we can do it. We can certainly do an envelope plan. I've got an additional concern. I'm, I'm looking at your drainage and uh, your northernmost uh, pond. Uh, everything's going downhill into the houses uh, that are north of us on Brandywine. And I've got a concern about that. Um, just want, don't want to have them getting additional problems from the downhill slope. Well, if I may. Yeah. Yes, you may. So our, uh, this, this is the drainage we use the left over from phase one. So the intent is to kind of get it all go this way, uh, where it was originally designed to. We're certainly not going to discharge anything on uh, phase one uh, of the drainage line. <coughs> and if you look, we may have had some issues in the past. They have, I assume they're possibly here, so they have some drainage easements going back here. Yeah, that's, that's a concern. If they got a drainage here, but then we've got elevation issues where everything is going downhill. Well, we're getting everything here and then this way to try and avoid doing anything on their backyards. Okay. That's going to work? I mean, we can certainly work with that. I think that's going to be key, Neil. Uh, the developer in phase one had many problems along that stretch of road. Yeah, I um, assume so, because that's probably why he did that easement, right? Yeah, and then the easement didn't work. It still doesn't work? It didn't. He had to go in and re rework a lot of the properties in there. And, you know, it wasn't a town issue, it was a developer's issue. So they wound up doing a lot of work in there and hit a lot of wet basins all along this, this area. Just because of the shale, the escarpment of the shale there. What's the difference in elevation between the first houses of the Um I don't know what these guys are here. But here, let's say you're 885, and here you're 912. So you're 40 something feet, and you're probably just as much there. So there's, there's a significant gradient. Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Okay. But Doug, maybe you and I can get together sure. and talk about. Yeah, okay, absolutely. We certainly don't want to make any situation there worse. Right. If you, if you know what's going on there. Getting back to what Joe had said before on that northernmost basin. You've got a emergency spillway. Wouldn't that go right into the drainage lines? Phase one. Well, the intent would be for it to follow the path of the pipe that's shown as well. But then you would be discharging into phase one. Not the yard, so it's going. Well, we go into it, correct. Which is where it goes now, too. So it was a challenge, and it's going to be a challenge. We know that. Well, we can certainly try and address those concerns moving forward. I may not have seen it, but do we have any reports relative to uh, where the water is and whether there's water available in all these lots? As far as the, the wells? The wells. We haven't taken that step yet. No, because we wanted to go through and talk about what we're talking about tonight. And then as we move forward, we've had to allow people come and build some uh, test wells to determine the flows and things like that. Okay, because I think that's going to be critical in a 34 lot subdivision, whether or not there's uh, sufficient water for efficient uh, plant homes. Right. With, okay, with the sewers, uh, it's coming off of that cul de sac, correct? That's where you pick it up? Correct, that's where it stops. Mm -hmm. and, and then you've got some good <coughs> elevation in the flow. Do you anticipate having a pump station or, or no, any lots with? It, 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 thankfully, again, we're so high and this is so low. There's a couple of sewer runs. There's one that starts here that goes this way. Yeah. There's one that starts here that comes across the country. So it's all gravity fed, the pump station. Okay. 
none of these homes would be the correct one. Unless the, the, they wanted to put something in the basement, but for, for first okay. floor elevation, they would not be okay. in okay. the homes. Do they have very utilities like they did in the mining mine? Which is your article? Yeah, electric, uh, everything will be on the ground. Gas, there's gas in Hanbury, it'll be on the ground. What do you think about uh, generators? I mean, the, I, I've lived in Malia's now for almost 60 years, and uh, our record of uh, power outage is not the best in the country. Um, these people on wells without uh, electricity are screwed because without electricity, the wells don't work. I know I have to. So I'm wondering when you build these houses, I assume they're going to be four and five hundred thousand dollar homes. Are you planning to include a gas generator in there? We're going to uh, plan to include the option for the customer to select a, a, a generator so that they can handle that. They don't have that. It's definitely something that we do regularly. I'm not okay. And uh, we, we plan on offering every one of these customers a generator. And that's the time to do it. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Get all the transfer switches in. Standing on Brandy Wine this evening, uh, looking up at the hill, uh, I can imagine that you're going to get a lot of pushback from the neighbors. Because they're just going to look up at that and say, oh my God, here comes the water. But they've already got problems with water, flood storm water. Looking up at the hill is going to make them very nervous. So just, just make them very nervous. In anything we've ever participated in, we take a lot of care in making sure that there's no water running down the hill. Whether it's whether it's the cutting the, the uh, trenches in or whatever it needs to be to make sure the water is directed properly. Because the last thing that a homeowner wants or that we want is somebody having a water issue. There are not too many things that I can think of that are worse than that. Got a, I've got a general question if I can ask it. Um, sure. I know you guys build homes. Yes. I've seen you all over. Have you ever done the actual site work for subdivision before? Uh, we did it in Skinny Atlas for Parkside. We were part of that development. Yeah, I don't know where that is. It's, uh, it's right in the village of uh, Skinny Atlas. Okay. And uh, so we, had, we, were, uh, we got the thing going and started and participated in the first couple of sections. How many lots was that subdivision? That lot was a total of about 50 as well. Okay. And um, you contracted out for the site work? Or you had well, work? it was a little different because it was in the village. And the village had a lot of very unusual mm -hmm. regulations and rules and things that they wanted to have in place. So it was a little bit more challenging because it wasn't as, I won't say simple as this, but they wanted all the utilities buried in the middle of the road. And uh, so that if they had to be disturbed later for whatever reason, you had to dig the road up. So there were a lot of very unusual things that were part of that uh, subdivision process. And uh, I wouldn't look forward to doing it again. <laughs> I think the site work here is far from simple. I think this is a... Oh, I don't mean this is simple. Oh. But in terms of how they, how they wanted it approached, Okay. And, and where the utilities were going to be. A lot of it were, were relatively unique in the development process. Can you run into a lot of bedrock up there? Uh, we have done a, a number of uh, minor things there, but we have not done uh, excavation yet, oh. test excavations on those lots, which is part of what we would do when we were, wherever these detention basins end up, Exactly. We would want to come in and determine what that is so we know what we're dealing with. And when we uh, lay down to this road, uh, the center line of the road is, is kind of the balance point. We know we have to cut the high side and fill the low side, but we try to keep the center line of the road with the file of the existing grade. But we, know, we know we're going to have to move a lot of dirt from the high side to the low side. Uh, we're going to try and take advantage of that with some of the houses, offer potential walkouts with some of the houses, but we know we're going to be flopping dirt from one side of the road to the other, but give us a level playing field. And, and I've lived down in Hanabury for 34 years, and uh, we built homes on Hanabury and, and all the area around it, and uh, so 
we're we're very familiar with it. We love the area. Uh, the people that own Brandy Wines, his wife has been calling my wife for the last two years saying, come on, can't you buy this thing? <laughs> they, we're moving with the grandkids and all of that. Uh, we're very comfortable. We do wells, septics, um, all kinds of site development for the last 33 years since we've been building. And we know what that is. We, know, we offer different uh, uh, choices, green energy and solar and all the things for our customers to choose, including generators. And uh, so this definitely falls into our what we do all the time. I, I get a joint what Rich said before about these uh, basins. Uh, I think we, we've uh, rerouted some prior developments because the basins were on individual people's property. And without a firm understanding of who's responsible for it and uh, that it's going to be maintained and who is maintaining it and who's absorbing the costs of maintaining it, the way it, it's looking right now as it sits is these individual homeowners are going to be thrust with the responsibility to maintain this. And I'm having a hard time adjusting the figures in my head as to who's going to be responsible for how much when, when it's spread over so many different parcels. Okay. So I, I think we need to have a good explanation from you folks on how you're handling it. So both water issues, getting fresh water supply and what you're doing with the water in the basin and who's maintaining it is, is a significant issue. Okay. That's why we want the expert. We can discuss online. Again, it, the attempt is, is just to be able to put houses where we think we want them and then you know, do the stormwater. But we'll look at it, we'll clarify it before we go any further uh, and give the board a, a better outline of our, whether it's go to an HOA for maintenance, if, if that's on the table with Hank Collins, we can certainly do that. But these big basins, that's what we normally recommend. Whether we go along with that or not, that's up to you. But uh, at least then there's responsibility and, and somebody who's in charge that has the ability to take care of the maintenance. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. We'll certainly and the access discuss it. Yeah, we'll have we'll have to have access to these just like sewer and uh, uh, for maintenance and all that good stuff. We we wanted for this first pass to make sure that everybody could see what we were proposing and what we had wanted to do. And uh, to see to get the issues that you're raising now so that we can address them. Okay. And the sewer company has agreed to take on this project? The what? The sewer company has agreed to provide sewer service to this development? Uh, uh, like county? Yeah. We've sent on a WEP uh, the full profiles and plans. They'll probably make us do a offset somewhere along the line. Right. Uh, but I have not heard back from them. Yet. Okay. okay. Have we got county comments? Back we, yet? We've sent to the county. We have not received so back their records. So we'll probably get, we'll at least get input when we get the county comments back. Okay. But I have not, we sent the sewer plan to the county a month ago and I haven't heard back from now. So is this Meadowbrook limestone? Yes. Okay. We tried to follow the, um, what the original proposal was when the subdivision was um, brought in the first section was done initially. And uh, so this is things that we needed to get your comments so that we can adjust them before the next meeting. And yeah. Are there any other questions or concerns that uh, that you have? Yeah, so I, ma managing the water, both coming and going is a big thing. Right, that's a big thing. And again, I'm Mark Harrington. This is my stepson, Michael Patnado, who runs the company now. My wife's son, but really mine. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, he's involved in all of our customers and with anything that happens in the company. So either one of us obviously can be, uh, you know, come into the meeting, talk about it, and we'll do whatever we can to get you the information that you need timely. Uh, did you see that at the bottom there are two proposed lots off of the, um, the original subdivision? Uh, I'll just reference it here, holding this up. Down at the bottom where the old Brandywine section ends, there's a little hammerhead here. Yeah. And we're proposing to put in a uh, cul-de-sac 
which will make the highway department happy, and then have two houses down there. And these two houses will have their own water supply. We checked with Aqua, and they wrote us a letter saying that they can serve these houses with the water and the water pressure that's existing in the original Brandywine section. We should probably check with Rob, too. He may be happier with that with a hammerhead. Really? It's easier to plow. You just turn I would have thought the opposite. You push and turn. We're happy to call it. Yeah, call the tracks are problematic because you got to right. circle around and the snow is in the middle and it takes a lot more time to plow. Uh, personally speaking, we love hammerheads. <laughs> it it, it is easier too. to deal with. It's a lot easier to build, too. Yes. There, there is an easement there, not for the hammerheads, so we just have to turn it over to the town. We should just check with Rob before we do that. Have you had any discussions with the county about the curb cuts you're looking for? Uh, I did reach out to the county because uh, the Hembury Road is a county road. Uh, we went out and we did site distance, and they're fine with the way it's shown here. I can provide an email from the county, or it's going to come back to the it's, Yeah, it's going to come back. I was just curious if you had it. Yeah, it was one of the first things we did was reach out, and uh, they were okay with it. He's been, he's been doing a lot of work. I know he has. <laughs> and he's been working on it for a while. And I got a little bit more, a little bit more than yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Those plans are pretty detailed. Okay. We just wanted, to, we just wanted everybody to see that it could work. And now our job is between now and the next meeting is to get you the answers, the initial answers, if you're okay with that. Now our next meeting is not until October 26, uh, due to uh, Columbus Day, uh, two weeks earlier. Uh, so whether we put it on or not will depend on what, what you get to us and when you get it to us. Can you write out another county comment coming back? I think it's the 14th. Yeah, I think it's the 14th. It'll be no. the before the next meeting. And, and we actually put, and we reached out to the county as well for road names. And they sent us a list. Of, if anybody has any idea for road names, please let me know. <laughs> China, China virus is one of them. Yeah, we'll, we <laughs> their like road them. names are, they're not picked for a reason because nobody wants them. So if anybody has any road names they prefer, let me know and I'll run it by the board because their road names. Yes, No, I well, have to Harrington Home. We, we overruled home. that. We said we, yeah. at the very least, if we couldn't find a name that worked with all of his children, uh, that we'd look at, you know, Brandywine uh, Circle South or something along those lines to see what comes out. So we'll, we'll, hopefully we'll be able to come up with something, either county suggestions or um, something, something fun. If it, if it helps in the process and you want us to name it after one of you, that's okay too. It doesn't matter. I'm happy to do it. Probably ought to wait until we get here when we get the say next week. <laughs> So, thank, thank you for coming in. You're welcome, and then we know what we're doing. Right? We're going to clean up some stuff. Doug, I'll call you. Yep. You yep. care about the neighbors. Yep. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, we have a problem with those guys. Yep. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Neil. I appreciate uh, it. Uh, one thing. Yes, sir. Do you think you can uh, get some kind of an idea about water flow, you know, the water availability of that many wells up there? Yeah. Uh, you know, kind of early on, because yeah, that's yeah, so. probably kind of critical.
Second by Rich. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.